we are on the old Roman bridge in Verona. Oh, it's it's so beautiful. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it is such a beautiful day too. We can hear the river yeah. underneath us. It's yeah. just uh, crazy. Pretty raging river. Yeah. So yeah, we're about to uh, discover a little bit more of Verona, but so far it is absolutely magnificent. Yeah, let's go. Our first stop is the Scaliger Tombs. It's a group of five Gothic funerary monuments in Verona, Italy, celebrating the Scaliger family, who ruled in Verona from the 13th century to the late 14th century. The tombs are located in a court outside the church of Santa Maria Antica, separated from the street by a wall with iron grills. Built in Gothic style, they are a series of tombs, mostly freestanding, open, tabernacle-like structures rising high above the ground. The last tomb of Giovanni was built into the wall of the church above the entry. When you're finished visiting the tombs, head on over to Piazza dei Signori. Many historical and architecturally beautiful buildings line the square. Each building offers a slightly different style, and the square is a mismatch of different time periods that creates a pleasant contrast. Music performances are often held here, and there are also several cafes and restaurants with outdoor seating. Nearby is another famous plaza called Piazza dei Lere. This diamond-shaped piazza lies in the heart of the historic center of the city and serves as one of the main points of activity. There are several fountains and marble statues throughout the square, and if you're hungry, there's a good selection of cafes and restaurants. And if you happen to be there at night, the square is lit up for a romantic dinner. When we were there, there were lots of vendors selling everything from beautiful, colorful Italian ceramics to hats, shoes, belts, dresses, and more. Standing proudly on the north side of the piazza is the Lamberti Tower. It is the tallest tower in Verona, standing at 84 meters high. Construction originally started in the 1100s, however the tower stood in a state of disrepair and it was not until the 15th century that the tower was completed. If you want to see Verona from a different angle, you can climb to the top of the tower and see the whole city spread out before you. After a morning of sightseeing, we thought we'd grab a couple cappuccinos at a local cafe. Here we are guys, having a cafe con leche. <laughs> I think that's uh, Spanish, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I got the bells ringing in the back, and we're about to like witness a wedding going on. It was so nice to see an Italian wedding, and you could see that it was so elegant and beautifully planned. The wedding was held at the Basilica de Santa Anastasia, a very historical church containing very masterful designs throughout. If churches and gardens are your thing, be sure to check out the links in the description below for more information. The bridesmaids are ready to go inside and we're off to continue our tour of Verona. No trip to Verona is complete without visiting Juliet's house. After all, they call it the City of Love. Verona is famous for having an association with William Shakespeare. Several of his plays are set in this city, including the epic Romeo and Juliet. You can see the fabled balcony, and inside the house there's a selection of informative displays. Outside there's a wall where you can write a note and confess your love to each other. Verona has its own version of the iconic Colosseum in Rome and is just as spectacular and possibly better preserved. Constructed in 30 AD, it is remarkable that this structure has stood in such a fine condition for thousands of years. As the largest piazza in Verona, the Piazza Bra is one of the main tourist areas of the city and contains a great amount of historic buildings, public amenities and eateries. Sitting on the banks of the River Adige, the Castle Vecchio is a hugely important structure and has stood since the initial construction in 1354. 
serving as a primary mode of defense for the city. The castle was the greatest achievement of engineering for the Scaliger dynasty. The castle Vecchio Bridge is attached to the main complex and provides fantastic views down the river. Don't miss the castle of St. Peter, which sits on a hill overlooking the Adige River. During the 1300s, the actual castle was built as a means of fortification for the city and stood firm for over 400 years. Although the castle is no longer open to the public, you can still walk through its grounds, admire the amazing architecture and experience fantastic views across to the historic center of Verona. Oh, and make sure you subscribe below to get our next video where we hiked up the hill to the castle and had a pizza at a secret restaurant where all the locals go. When we finished, we went on to the viewing platform to enjoy the amazing sunset over Verona where we took this beautiful sunset picture. There are so many interesting things to do in a new city and we like to cover a lot of them. What are your favorite things to do when you visit a new city? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure you like and hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell so you can be notified whenever we get a new video that comes out. Anyway, we'll talk to you next time. Bye.